there! If you've been wondering how to do this mica shift technique and you'd like to know how to do it yourself, then just keep watching and we'll show you how. Hey everybody, this is MJ with Creative Minds and today we're going to be talking about mica shift. The mica shift technique is best done if you understand what it is, the principles of how it works. And basically, you have to use polymer clay that is infused deeply with mica powders, such as the Primo Accents uh, Pearl, which I am holding right here, any of the metallic polymer clays, most of them all are infused with very high content of mica powders. It's not going to work with, with any kind of glittery clay or anything like that. It only works with clay infused with some mica powders. And so if we open this packet here of pearl, I'm just going to break some off here. Okay. Right there, I don't know if you can see it or not, but if you look, you can see some darker area here, and then it's lighter right down here. Okay, you know I've talked before about conditioning your clay and how important it is to condition your clay because it lines the polymers up. Well, not only that, when you have mica powder in your clay, you have to ensure that you have your clay conditioned thoroughly, especially prior to doing mica shift. So, what I'm going to explain it to you a little bit further as we go. So I'm just going to roll this out a little bit. I'm going to begin to condition it. I'm going to do it with my hands for a minute and just begin to warm this up a little bit. Basically, in the polymer clay that has mica powder in it, the mica powder is each little piece of mica is like a disc. And the discs, when they're lying flat, they are a certain color. And then if you were to take the flat disc and turn it this way, straight up and down, it's going to have a different color here. It's going to be darker because the disc is lighter on top and then on the side, it's darker. So when you start to, sorry about my rolling pad there. When you start to roll your, I'm going to run it through the pasta machine once here. I just had to get it so that it was good enough to go through the pasta machine. And... When you roll it through the pasta machine just once, you're going to notice, you should notice, that the clay has some areas that are like lines in it and demarcations in it where you can see that the mica powders are not all flat. So one thing you wanna do when you do roll it through your pasta machine and now some people disagree and they say you can turn it any way you want but some say that you want to fold it the same way each time and you're going to run it through your pasta machine with the fold side down about 20 to 30 times the same way now I've heard that you can do it in any direction that it does not matter so, and I've done it both ways, and it really does not matter. However, it just depends on the circumstance, I guess. Um, I don't, personally, I don't think it matters all that much. But they say to keep it all going the same way until everything is good and conditioned. I like to turn it the other way because sometimes the ends just you can't get them conditioned all the way. They still have the, the frilly bits on the end and it's easier to get those conditioned if you fold it the other way as well. So that's just a matter of opinion. You can do it either way, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and make sure that these are all lined up good and then I'll demonstrate what I am talking about. Okay, so once you've conditioned your clay enough, you realize that it's, it's, it's basically the lighter color when you have those lines of darkness running through there. It doesn't 
condition to a darker color, it conditions to a lighter color. And when it's all light and uniform and nice and conditioned well enough, then you're not going to see any kind of, of darker color running through there at any point. It's, they're all going to be lying flat at this time. All the mica powder discs are all lying flat. So the next thing you want to do is get yourself some type of deep patterned texture plate. And I'm just going to use this one here. You can use any one you want. But what you're going to do is basically I put a little bit of armor all on either the disc or my clay, whichever both whatever doesn't matter and you're going to lie your clay over it and then what I like to do because a lot of times when you just take the roller like people do uh, you'll find that your clay is gonna lift up and then it may if you keep rolling it may press back down and give you a second image on there and then usually I just burnish it lightly just to ensure that it's all pressed in there good depending on how big of a pattern I'm doing or whatever just want to ensure that we've got a good impression but you don't want to roll your clay out too thin because if you do that then if you roll your clay out too thin then you're going to be slight remember you have to this is a slicing technique so you want to make sure that you get a good impression but that you're not going too thin and then you can just go ahead and peel your clay off and once you do that you should have a good impression on your on your clay okay and another good thing to do is if your clay is warm if it's kind of humid and warm where you're at you may want to pop it in the fridge for a few minutes just to get off that initial warmth that you have from conditioning and all that because you want your clay to be nice and cool when you go to the next step so right now all the the polymers I'm sorry right now the all the mica discs are still appearing to be lying flat but the truth is is that where the texture goes down into the clay it forces the other clay up into the the areas where it lifts up into in between these designs and when it lifts it up it changes the direction of the the mica powder disc so that's what we want to expose so basically I like the method of lying it over top of a rather than uh, bending the blade and slicing it I like to bend the clay over something and and then slice it straight down and uh, I usually will slice it uh, I'm for you I'm going to show you at an angle but I, I will slice it just straight up and down like this and basically you you don't have to worry about curving your your blade and all you want to do is shave off the high areas and take your time you do not want to shave off any of the lower areas because it's the higher areas where the discs have been changed and so you're just shaving those off to expose those so you have more of a 3d pattern than a, a, a pair appearing like a 3d pattern even though your surface is going to be flat so I'm just slowly showing you this you know because you don't this is not something you want to rush through and if your clay is kind of just squishing down as you go then you probably need to put it in the refrigerator for a few minutes because it's more than likely that your clay is too warm so you should not have a problem with that so you just go ahead and 
and keep slicing off the the raised portions and as you can see I don't know if you can see that already but right in here it's already showing that there's like a still a pattern there but there's no there's no clay there uh, raised clay that is so you just go ahead and shave these off and it and you just take your time take all the time in the world because it's better that you do that than to gouge deeply and this is nice because your clay all drops down here and if you mess up you can just roll this on it pick it all up and try again but just remember to condition your clay again as it's going to need to the pop the micas are going to need to be lined up again before you try to do this attempt this again so so I, I hope you're getting the procedure down I'm just shaving this keeping my blade straight and going about taking off that top level of clay that's raised and it's you're just you have to be very careful not to go too deep because if you do you're going to shave your pattern right off along with it and this clay is not so bad because it's well it was unopened but it's been sitting for a little while too so so it's really not a big deal that I'm cutting into it. Okay, and I'm going to continue doing this. And I'll be back once I've got this all shaved off. So I think you've got the idea right now of what I'm trying to do. And so I'm going to continue to do this and get all this shaved off. Okay, so what you should have when you're finished with with all of this is you're looking at a 3D image that's actually flat. And that's the goal of, of this whole process. So what you want to do is carefully remove your clay from whatever you've placed it on. And then you can hopefully I can see it really well. I don't know if you can, but you can still see this pattern on there, yet the clay is completely flat. Yet it has a 3D pattern that looks like it has depth. And it's really, really cool. So the next step that you would be doing is let me just move some of these fragments over here. Now some people will roll their clay through the pasta machine again. And you really want to, your goal is to get it as flat as possible. Uh, unless you want to stretch your pattern out, you don't really need to do that. You can add a small, the, the same size, the same size of a slice to the back of this and run it through that way if you prefer and then it won't distort your pattern as much or you can just take your roller and which I find or this burnisher and I just gently go across the surface with it and I burnish the surface and I sometimes I'll even put a piece of parchment paper there because my goal is not to change the, the the pattern and all my goal is just to make sure that this is nice and flat and smooth so I just run over this a few times 
until I know it's flat and I feel it, you know, to make sure. And it's really beautiful and it is flat. And there you have it. Carefully lift it off your surface. And this piece now is completely flat. Completely flat. But yet, it appears to have a 3D design. And that is what mica shift is. Hopefully with this you can see that the mica discs have completely shifted in the areas of the design and have kept it intact. And though it looks three-dimensional, it's really flat. And that is what we're looking to go for when we do the mica shift technique. So you can go about then take your piece and cut, you know, cut it into a shape and use it in a different variety of projects. And I hope that this has helped you. I hope you've learned from this. And if it has, please give us a like down below, comment down below if you need to, and subscribe to our channel. We would love to uh, have you as a subscriber so we can show you more techniques, newer techniques. This one we're going to be using in some of our future pro projects, so we want to make sure we cover it for you. And we hope that you've enjoyed this and keep a watch on the community because the community is going to be opening up very soon. We're almost finished and the community is a place for all artists. It's free and there'll be a ton of stuff to do on it and we would love to have you join and fill it up with lots of laughter and art and all kinds of stuff. We'll have tutorials and people can post tutorials. You can also sell your stuff on there for free if you make stuff. So everything will be free for, for everyone. So again, we hope that this has helped you uh, understand the technique of mica shift. And we'll see you again in the next video. Okay, bye for now.